Google has created a world where people can collaborate virtually on any type of document and in turn is creating a simulated reality interface for society. By introducing a plethora of new pathways to access excess information, Google has effectively placed itself in a position to control the very flow of information being presented and delisted. Today, ordinary users, as well as journalists, tend to rely on the first pages of Google search for information, assuming that everything not listed there is not important or simply does not exist. In 2007, a group of Austrian researchers observed Google's place in the modern human mind. Quote, Google has become the main interface for our whole reality. To be precise, with the Google interface, the user gets the impression that the search results imply a kind of totality. In fact, one only sees a small part of what one could see if one also integrates other research tools." End quote. Through this process, Google has diminished our critical thinking skills and injures our emotions. Since information is already accumulated, people are less likely to think on their feet and rely on these pieces of information. Even though Google allows the enhancement of education, it only focuses on one type of education, practical thinking over critical thinking. This type of education is what John Henry Newman considers useful knowledge, which is different from liberal knowledge, which involves critical thinking. Critical thinking is useful in terms of decision making, allowing for the essence of human intelligence whereas Google focuses primarily on artificial intelligence, which devalues human intellect. Google has become an everyday term in the English vocabulary, as both a noun and a verb. Many times in our conversation, Google is synonymous with search the web. This is ironic when you consider the reason behind the organization's parent company's name. Quote, We liked the name Alphabet because it means a collection of letters that represent language, one of humanity's most important innovations, and is the core of how we index with Google Search. We also like that it means Alphabet, which we strive for. End quote. Alpha bet, hey? Aldous Huxley would sure be proud if he was around to see this today. Google Maps first started as a program designed at Sydney based company Where To Technologies to be separately downloaded by users. The company later pitched the idea for a purely web based product to Google management changing the method of distribution. In October 2004, the company in Sydney was acquired by Google, where it transformed into Google Maps. In the same month, Google acquired Keyhole, a geospatial data visualization company with controversial links to the CIA, whose marquee application suite, Earth Viewer, emerged as the highly successful Google Earth application in 2005. Other aspects of its core technology were integrated into Google Maps. Keyhole received investment from InQtel, the CIA's non-profit investment fund. On January 27, 2014, documents leaked revealed that Australian intelligence groups intercepted Google Maps queries made on smartphones and used them to locate users. One leaked document stated that, quote, 
It effectively means that anyone using Google Maps on a smartphone is working in support of a GCHQ system, end quote. We look the other way when Google is watching us. But when the government is watching us, it makes our blood run cold? Interesting. Such is the influence of the scope of Google's eyes in the sky.